You didn't click on the wrong channel. It's still me. Hope you like that little intro. As you can tell by now, we're doing things a little different today. We're gonna do a viral recipe with no video to follow. This matcha basque cheesecake is made by a pretty well-known Japanese bakery account on Twitter. Oh, sorry, I mean X. Anyways, all we have are these handwritten recipes in Japanese. But no need to worry, as you guys all know, I'm an expert on all languages. I'll show you the process and list all the ingredients and instructions in English at the end. Let's get started. My first step is getting triggered by a 2 ounce matcha powder bag that I paid $20 for. What the to make the paste, we'll measure out 20 grams of matcha powder. Look, that's $10 right there. So we'll also do 50 grams of water, stirring it with my ligma fork to combine evenly. You want your water to be around 160 degrees Fahrenheit. It's the best temperature to bloom it and extract the most flavor. We'll make sure to mix it thoroughly till it becomes a thick paste like this. Kind of looks like oil paint. Now heat up some heavy cream to about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. You don't want it to be too hot. It's okay, we'll just put in some ice and let it chill out for a minute. Once the temp is right, we'll pour in just a little bit to get it going. And when it's fully mixed, we'll pour in the rest of the cream. I have to be honest, this part is really satisfying. I think green is growing on me as a color. Once it's nice and smooth like this, we'll set it aside and move on to the main character. Ideally, you're gonna want your cream cheese to be completely room temperature, but if you're like me and never prepare for anything ever, you can just put it in the microwave for 40 to 90 seconds, depending on the power. So right here, I'm just gathering about 350 grams of cream cheese, and just fold them a little bit to get them even softer. If it gets a little bit difficult to work with, you can always just put it aside and deal with it later when you're in the mood. So so that's how I treat all my problems in life. In the recipe, it called for 110 grams of Japanese cane sugar, which is just like American cane sugar without the brutally racist history. And to the sugar, we're gonna mix in about 10 grams of cornstarch to help everything bind together. Now we'll pour into the cream cheese and continue mixing it till everything's fully dissolved. Mine's still quite clumpy, but as I said it before, we can just always put it aside and deal with it later. Time to get cracking with the eggs. <laughs> Three whole eggs and two egg yolks. The recipe calls for exactly 200 grams of egg mixture, so if your eggs are a little bit on the smaller side like mine, you can just add an additional egg yolk to make up for the weight. I'm beating it with a ligma fork over some warm water to make sure it's the smoothest texture, and we'll pour a little bit of the egg into the cream cheese mixture and fold it in. We'll repeat it for about five times. The reason why we're folding instead of beating it on the couch like usual is to avoid making it fluffy. We want to make sure our cheesecake is as dense and creamy as possible. The process might take a really long time, but you know, therapy is expensive. There's a slight problem of my mixer being unusually clumpy, so I'm gonna run it through a sieve real quick. Much better. Now for the most satisfying part of the entire video. We're gonna mix the matcha cream into the cream cheese mixture. You probably can already tell I'm putting in a lot of effort into this video. I even got a new springform cake pan. Before we pour the mixture in, we gotta prepare the parchment paper. Usually I just crumble it into a ball and just use it like that, but apparently there's a much better way to do it. So starting with a square piece, we'll fold it by the corner one, two, three, four times so it looks something like this now we'll use this piece to measure out the radius of the cake pan it's about three inches i'm really familiar with this length don't ask me why we'll make a crease by the edge of the pan and when we open it up we can see the shape is pretty apparent now this is where it's gonna get a little bit annoying as you can see i'm holding down the crease by the edge of the pan with one finger using my other hand to fold the upward side inward to make a 90 degree angle with the bottom crease and just try to make it as perpendicular as you can and i'm extremely sorry to say this trust me we're gonna have to repeat this step to every single fold. 
Once that's done, we should be able to easily fit into our pan. And every single fold on the side should be nice and even and beautiful, like this. So do you guys think all that work was worth it? Let me know in the comments. Alright, from now on, all easy work. After all that folding, at least I get to watch this satisfying pour. We'll just bang on the counter a few times to get back at my neighbor. Also just to make sure there are minimal air bubbles on top. So we'll preheat our oven to 480 and then right before baking it, we'll lower it to 450. I don't know why. Setting the timer to 28 minutes. So this is the end result. It's supposed to look burnt by the way, don't be too mean in the comments. I'm gonna give it a little haircut to make it look cleaner and we'll have to leave it on the counter till it completely cools. After about 2-3 to three hours, we can just wrap it up in plastic, put it in the fridge and rest it overnight. It's been about 12 hours, let's open it up and see what it looks like. Kinda reminds me of nuclear waste, or you know, infected elephant sh**. It's okay, it's supposed to look like that. Right now I'm thinking about cutting out the middle piece, but I don't want to make it look any worse. Alright, I can feel that a lot of judging's been happening, but let's take a look at the inside. It looks very creamy. But I just don't understand how is green and brown supposed to look appetizing, man. From a certain angle, this is starting to look like chocolate covered matcha ice cream. So do you guys think this is greener or my radioactive chicken is? I'm about to do the Instagram comments and I have a feeling that it's gonna be rough. So I'm gonna go make myself some coffee real quick. Alright, I'm fully prepared. Here we go. What's poppin'? Brand new whip just hopped in. I got options. I can pass it like Stockton. Just Josh. I'm spending this holiday locked in. My body got rid of them toxins. Sports in the top 10. I can put the box. I think this time the comments are generally more creative than usual. Not a lot of bathroom related words in there. So after all that waiting, it's time to give it a taste and rate it one through teen. I think I overbaked it a little bit because the texture is not as creamy as I expected, but the flavors are very impressive. Generally, I think this type of cheesecake is a little too sweet and dense. Like the first two bites are amazing and then you feel a little bit sick. But with the addition of matcha, it adds a little bit of bitterness and herbal aroma to balance everything out. Well, theoretically, you can take one bite after another and never get sick of it. I'm not doing it right now because it's too early in the morning. Also, it doesn't taste that good. It's a little bit on the hard side. So I'm going to give it a 7.8 out of 10. If I ever do it again, I'll probably bake it for about 8 minutes less. Should I retry this? Let me know in the comments. Alright, thank you.